You know, it's not just about having on the armor of God. It's about understanding the fight. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Sermon in 7, your daily dose of inspiration and the place where we prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that it's possible to receive a mighty word from God in a short period of time. I'm your host, Pastor Tim. Listen, we hear that passage of scripture a lot, put on the whole armor of God, and people can quote it forward and backwards. We know what the armor is. But the real question is not just about wearing the armor, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a moment. But it's also about understanding the fight that we're in. That's where I think that we're a little bit deficient. Do me a favor. Go get your Bibles really quickly and come with me to that famous passage of scripture that's found in Ephesians chapter 6, where it talks about putting on the whole armor of God. Let's go there now. And the word of God says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Now once again, very familiar passage of scripture and everyone normally talks about the armor that Paul explains in the following verses. But there's also the fight and understanding the fight that we're in. And I don't think that a lot of Christians really understand this fight. Let me just give you a couple of quick points and I'm going to send you on your way. The first thing that I want you to understand about this fight is that the enemy is faceless. It's important that you understand that. Paul said that our struggle is not against flesh and blood. If our struggle isn't against flesh and blood, that means that our enemy is faceless. One of the big problems that you and I have is we define our enemy based upon the individuals that we see. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand that we do have some very evil people in this world. And certainly, they don't need any influence from Satan to do evil things to us. But Paul is clear. The enemy is faceless. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. But one thing the enemy will do is the enemy will confuse the issue and have you think that, that the real enemy is the person that you see instead of Satan and the demonic realm. So in other words, black will fight against white male will fight against female young will fight against old especially in the church those who've been walking with god for a while will be at odds with those who just came in the door and on and on and on and on but that is not the enemy we get it confused because while we're busy fighting each other the real enemy is gaining ground and picking up territory because if we're fighting each other we can't defend what we should be defending. If there's a problem within the ranks of the soldiers, understand that the opposing army is going to have an easy time with the battle. And that's been going on with us for a while. I want to encourage you on today to stop seeing the person that you've been seeing as your enemy. They're not your enemy. Even if they're doing evil things, they're still not your enemy, especially if you're a Christian. We have one great enemy that we all should be combined in fighting. That's our first point. The second point is this. Paul speaks to a ranking. He talks about principalities and powers, our spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, he's regimenting the kingdom of darkness. But I want you to hear something here very clearly as well. Not only is there a ranking within the kingdom of darkness, but there's also an order and a structure that cannot be denied. Say whatever you want about Satan and those that align themselves with Satan, but one thing that you have to admit, they don't work against each other as they try to bring down the people of God. I see nowhere where one demon has stepped on the toes of another demon. I see nowhere 
where one demon has gotten into an argument with another demon over what they were going to do. Now, if that does occur, and it might, I don't know, I'm not in that realm, but one thing I do know, every time that you and I are attacked, those attacks are coordinated. And not only are they coordinated, but they come specifically designed for the person that's being attacked. The enemy is smart. The enemy will watch your life. The enemy will see the kinds of things that you like, the kinds of things that you don't like. So the attack that comes your way is what I call a tailor-made temptation. It is designed specifically for you. And there is coordination and cooperation within the kingdom of darkness. They all work together to bring down God's people. We need to have the same mindset and work together and understand that if one of us is fighting the enemy and somebody else is fighting the enemy, we don't need to be at odds. We're on the same team and it does us no good when we fight each other while the enemy behind our back begins to steal and take territory. That brings me to my third point, the territory, because Paul said in this passage of scripture that after you had done everything, and, and let me take a moment to explain what he meant by that, having done all. What he's basically saying is, is that after you've taken the time to put on the full armor of God, then you are prepared for to make your defense, all right? He's not talking about standing in victory here. He's talking about making your defense, taking your stand to hold the ground, the territory that you've been given. That's our responsibility. Soldiers have an obligation when they are in the ar when they're in the army to hold the ground, especially ground that they've conquered because you don't want the enemy to take it back. In this Christian life that we live, when we put on the full armor of God, we are prepared to hold the ground. Hold the line. We draw a line in the sand. We say this far and no further. And every time the enemy approaches that line, understand there's going to be a fight because we're going to do all that we can to make sure that evil does not progress in our lives, whether it's on an individual basis or whether we're talking about the body of Christ in general. God needs more soldiers that have this sort of mindset. Soldiers who have put on the full armor of God and who stand ready to make a defense, to say, you know what, God, we're going to fight. And if the enemy has come and, and into our territory, we're going to fight to push the enemy out because what God has given us belongs to us. But this can only happen if you and I are working together. Take note of what I've said in this particular message. Your enemy is not who you think. Your enemy, your real enemy, is attacking you in a structured way. But you got to put the full armor of God on and be prepared to make your defense. God doesn't need soldiers that are unwilling to fight. He needs soldiers who understand what's at stake and are willing to lay it all on the line the same way that the Lord did for us. Amen goes right there. Listen, everybody. I'm all out of time for this particular video, so you already know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button, share this video with a friend, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about what you've heard here on today. Now go ahead and have yourselves a wonderful day. Remember who you are, remember who you belong to, and never forget that this God that we serve, the one who commands us to put on the full armor so that we can take our stand, that God, he can do anything but fail. Join me for another episode of Sermon in 7. God bless you.